Hi, my name is Harrison Fitch. I'm uh, Eleodoro Velasquez. And today we're going to present our Harbinger processor. We chose Harbinger because it's our forerunner. It's going to get our name out there. So our agenda is we're going to start with a little overview of the MIPS processor that we based our processor on. Then we're going to cover the formats, including our enhancement formats. Then we're going to go over the enhancements in depth and then the hardware involved with the enhancements. So we have the MIPS baseline. Basically, it's a Harvard architecture. A Harvard architecture is basically one where data memory and instruction memory is separate with different bus, data bus, and control signals. It's a 32-bit RISC processor, and it contains all the, the baseline MIPS instructions. So we have our formats right here. We got the R type. Uh, we have a RS, RT, and RD field. So those specified RS and RT specify the source operands, RD specifies the destination register. We have a shift amount field, that's for our shift logical instructions and our shift arithmetic. And then we have our function that chooses the function for the R type instruction. So next we have our I type. We got the opcode, the RS and the RT field. RS and RT can be source operands and RT is also a destination for if you have a load word or um, store word. Branch instructions also are done with I type. We got our immediate value that will be sign extended. It's a 16 bit immediate value. And then we let's move on to the J type. J type has the opcode to specify the jump that we're doing. That can be a jump or just a jump in link. And we have the jump address that is sign extended and concatenated with two zeros for the actual effect of the address. So this is a top level of our design. We have our CPU up here. We got our control signals going to the BIU, our data memory, and IO. BIU is our bus interface unit. It's specifically to the data memory right now, uh, but a future enhancement would be putting it onto the IO as well. We have our control signals going to the IO, the interrupt and the interrupt acknowledge. Interrupt acknowledge coming from the CPU and the interrupt going to the CPU. And then we have some other address signals and the data signals going to the bus interface unit. So the bus interface unit is not part of your CPU, huh? Shouldn't it be? It, it should be, but I wanted to, for this diagram, the reason I was showing it like this is to okay. highlight the fact that it's not going to IO as well. Right. That's the main reason. But is it in the CPU? Technically not. So it was instantiated as a separate module? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, moving on to our CPU, we got our MCU up here, the integer data path, the instruction unit, and the vector data path. So we have some signals. I want to highlight the fact that RS, RT, and RD, those fields from the formats earlier, are going to both data paths. We have a sign extended 16 and a sign extended 10. Mm -hmm. So, and then there's the control signals going to each data path. Oh, also, vector data path only has vector ALU out, while integer data path has integer ALU out and DL mm -hmm. coming from the RT register. So we're going to cover our enhancements now. All right, uh, enhancement for SIMD, specifically vector, vector instructions. Uh, uh, vector instructions are basically uh, computing multiple data during, with one instruction. Uh, uses for this is, uh, so like multimedia applications. So let's say you have an array of pixels. You could uh, use one instruction to, to modify all those pictures in one instruction. It could also be used uh, digital signal processing and specifically audio applications. I just want to highlight the multimedia with the pixels, that's like changing brightness for a specific image. So for our formats, we added a VR type and a VI type. It has the E key field for the following the MIPS format. It has RS, RT, and RD. We have a field right here that's just zeroed out right now, but then we have our three-bit element field that's to select. So our vector registers can be divided up, up until uh, eight bytes, so it's a 64-bit vector. This 3-bit field selects which byte for instructions such as a slide instruction, and the function select is used to select for other vector operations. We have our VI type. This is used for our double load word and double store word, which I'll talk about later. The RS and RT work similar to the I type, and we have a 10-bit immediate value, and the function select for that as well. Excellent. So first we're going to go over our double load word. So um, I'll cover, it says R bus right here, but that's in the bus interface unit. So it comes from memory. 
Uh, these are stored in big endian format. This isn't the best example for that, but the first uh, the first word at C is going to be loaded into the upper the upper word, and mm -hmm. the lower word is going to come from the next trailing word. Mm -hmm. So here's our bus current base unit. These are all 32-bit registers. They're all buffers. So this is our E buffers. They're coming from the ALU out of the vector data path. We have our I buffer. This is only used for a store word instruction, a normal store word. And we have our address register that's used to specify the effective address we're using for load words, store words, and double store words, and double load words. Then we have our read buffers. Read buffer one will always be used for each load word, but read buffer two is used for the double load word. So I'm going to highlight right now that these are the these are the three buffers that are used for the double load word instruction. I I'll stay here for a second. So I just want to talk about the states that you're going through. So the integer data path is going to calculate the effective address. It's going to load it into MAR, and it's also going to then use the MAR to load the first byte into the RBUF2. The reason there's no output enables or anything on these buffers is because immediately after the first, the first word is written, it'll switch to writing to the RBUF1. So, and then once both of those RBUFs are ready, it will load that into the vector data path. There's a path for both of them to the vector data path and also a path to the integer data path for just the read buff one. Are you, Any sure, you that? sure they don't have load enables? They don't. No, okay. So the effective address calculation is done for the first one. Right, got that. So that goes into this one. So you're going to you're you're read memory into read buff two. Read buff two. Then you immediately switch. So it'll only be updating R buff one. And then once R buff one is at the correct, uh, once that has the correct data, so once it's loaded with the next uh, word, it will load that then into the BDP, only after both of them are ready. How do you read 64 bits in one clock? Hmm? I, oh, that's a decoder. It's not that's a MOS. That's a decoder, yeah. What's the 32 bits into the decoder? The 32 bits is the past the 32 bits come from memory. It's not the best decoder structure. But this is a select. You select it. And so how do you read 64 bits in one clock cycle? You don't read it in one clock cycle. It does take more states than that. Then how do you load two separate registers and not erase them on the next clock cycle? So the first effective address calculation is loaded into MAR. Then when you're loading the, before you load the second one, there is also a second address calculation going on within our ALU. I'll highlight that later. OK. So double store word is similar, the upper word goes into the first the first word of memory, big endian, and followed by the second word into the next word. So this uses these registers. So it'll just come straight from the ALU, the vector ALU out, and then the address will come from the IDP. The effective address will be used to store these. It'll take um, so first it'll store the bbuf2, then it'll store bbuf1. So this is our enter data path. We have our register file for its 32-bit register file, and we have our uh, RS and RT. So your question earlier about the two calculations, it'll come out from ALU, go into ALU out, then there's a path back to the T mux, it's hard to see, just highlight that path, but it goes into the T mux. It will be loaded as the second effective address calculation and then is loaded into the MAR once again. So that's how it does it without changing the contents. This is our vector data path as a 64 bit reg file, as the same RS, RT, and RD. They didn't really show, they have the same function select actually, but this one has a function select mux. So there's an enable coming from our MCU. The default is pass T to simplify for the, for the load word and store word instructions. 
and or the double store word in particular. Then we have uh, ALU reg, D and reg for the double load word, and there's a path back to the register pop. Uh, so for our verification, we have our data memory, instruction memory, uh, our, and then the resultant vector registers, and the data memory after running the instructions. This is the instructions we're going to be running. It's just a series of load words and store words at the end. We're going to be loading that data into register vector register one. So after running that uh, instruction, we get we see it there in res vector register one. So the second data memory. Uh, after running that instruction, we see it in register two. And note how it's a two word data memory. So uh, the full 64-bit value, or the 232-bit values are loaded into one 64-bit register. Mm -hmm. The lower address is uh, the most significant bits of the vector register. Third instruction, data memory there. Running that instruction, we see that at vector register three. It's important to note that um, register 15 was already loaded um, with the memory pointer for, mm -hmm. for uh, loading the word, and that we're incrementing by, by eight and not four, because if we use four, we'd have overlapping memory uh, results. So since we're using a 64-bit value, we have to increment by eight. Mm -hmm. For the store word, we're storing vector, vector register three into uh, memory. Uh, register 14 was already loaded with a memory pointer. As you can see, vector register three was loaded into two 32-bit values uh, with the upper word in the lower address of data memory. The lower word is then put into the to the higher address of data memory. Okay, so here's a peek inside of our vector ALU. We have our function select over here that's going to be used to select the paths. Based on the function select, you'll choose whether it's a byte operation using the 8-bit ALUs a half word operation using the 16-bit ALUs, and then a double word operation using the 32-bit ALUs. Uh, I'm sorry you can't really read this, but that's a combo logic cloud for our splat instruction. It's actually not contained within the 8-bit ALU, the byte operation. So first we'll dive into the 8-bit operations. So we got our byte addition. It adds each individual. So first it splits it up into 8 bytes. I should highlight that first. So 8 bytes, 64 bits. It does each individual addition for each byte, just straight down. It stores into the respective at, into the respective byte of the destination register. B sub is very similar, but this time with the subtraction. Both of these operations are unsigned. We do not have any flags for signed operations at this moment, but we would like to add them. Uh, I would say uh, we the reason we have no flags because generally we'd like to have software handle the flag handling mm -hmm. and not hardware. Mm -hmm. So then we got our B-splat. So that element field from our format, you'll have that to select the element. Um, this one is just the example selecting the element. If this is 0, 1, and 2, and then replicating it throughout the destination register. All right, vector by instruction verification. We have our data memory, our instruction memory, and the results in vector registers. So running the first instruction is the B add that. Uh, we're adding registers 1 and 2. We already verified that we can load uh, mm -hmm. registers. So 1 and 2 are already previously loaded with data memory. Uh, those are registers 1 and 2. When you add them, you're adding the byte values. You see them right there. Second instruction, we're subtracting those values. Subtracting 1 and 2, loading them into register 9. You see the values there. Third instruction is a B splat. We're getting register 5. We're getting its third element byte. and uh, this replicating throughout register 18. So as you can see, register or byte 3 is hexadecimal 12 that's replicated through register 18. If you're wondering why this instruction might be useful, if uh, if you ever need a constant value that you like add or subtract, uh, you could replicate mm -hmm. that byte throughout one right. register and you op do an operation with another register. Now we're going to step through using the function select that selects the half word operations. So we got our had instruction, which is half word addition. 
It's similar to the byte addition, but it'll use it'll split it up into four 16-bit fields and then add them individually. Next, we have H sub, which is same same separating of 16-bit fields, and it stores it into the respective uh, destination register after the subtraction. Alright, uh, half word uh, vector instruction verification. We have data uh, data memory hand instruction, just simple two instructions and resultant vector registers. First instruction we're half half word add. Uh, we're adding registers three and four. Again, they're already previously loaded. Uh, if we add them, you can see the resultant value register ten. For the second instruction, we're subtracting registers three and four, we're loading them to register twelve. Back to register 11, I mean, and you can see the results there. All right. Great. Now we're going to cover. We're going to cover our double word instructions. Let's click that. So we have our double add separates in two fields. So the two words are added and stored in the destination register. Double AND, similar, this is going to cover now logical operations. So we have an AND, we have a double NOR, so it is an OR operation that nots the result. We got a double OR, which does the OR for the 64-bit 64, 64 64 bit subtraction with the two words being subtracted, and then an exclusive OR. Mm -hmm. All right, back, uh, verification again, data memory, instruction memory, and results in vector registers. Uh, again, five and six reloaded. Uh, we're storing into the first one, we're adding double word. Uh, we have that line separating the two 32 bit values. I see. I see. Uh, those register five and six were added. Uh, the lower word were added, stored into register 11. Uh, second instruction, we're subtracting them, same thing, same process. Uh, we're storing them to register 13. Uh, 14, just uh, 14, 15, 16, 17 are logical operations. You do the same half word, you operate in the second half uh, word of five and six and store it into the respective uh, registers. And those are stored in 16, 17. All right, so just a brief overview. We went over the byte, the half word, and the 32 bit. So some future enhancements we want to do is make some signed vector operations, so adding flags to the ALU, maybe some, some exceptions. A VIU interface that I said earlier to the also to the IO module and then floating point, floating point vector, and then a pipeline architecture. Are there any questions? Don't have time. That was excellent. <laughs>